At last night's Armory event, I gave the Saber Dagger Dorinthia build a go, and I gotta be honest, it was actually way better than I expected it to be. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, Flesh and Blood folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando for just a quick video this morning. I wanted to basically fall on my dagger, as it were, and uh, acknowledge that, yeah, this this Dorinthia Dagger Sabres build is is better than I gave it credit for. As you guys recall, when the, when the dagger was spoiled, I, I thought it was hot garbage. I was not impressed with it because I didn't know where you were going to come up with all the cash to do the things you wanted to do. And uh, I, I do still think that it's a little more expensive than I would like it to be. I mean, it's it's no Kasai, but I have to be honest, the Saber Dagger Dorinthia kind of feels like a Kasai in its, its own little way. And uh, while I do not think it is S tier by any means, I do think it's a fun, fun little deck. So kind of the, the backstory and why I decided to try it this week was there was a, so I, I made my Understanding Allies and Fab video, which is a new player video. I put a ton of time into those, right? I put it up on the Facebook. It got like four likes because that's how it works. And then right below it, you can see over here was the uh, new Dory archetype might be S tier secret OP Quicksilver new meta thumbnail, right? And I, I got a ton of likes and it, to be very, very clear here, and I'll actually link the video below because it's a very well done video. This is a We Make Best. I, I think they're out of somewhere. They're out of somewhere in Europe. I assume England or something. I, I don't know where they're from. Either way, they did a pretty good video on it. It's got a nice little deck tech in there. Obviously, it's very very clickbaity, and I just had to laugh because whenever I have something that's like remotely clickbaity, I just get blown up on the internet. And this one got 4K views, and it's just the rules only apply when you guys don't like me. I get it. I get it. But it's that's that's fine. So I mean, to be to be very clear here, their video is fine. I was just frustrated that. You could have secret OP S tier because no, it's it's not S tier. All right, so let's go ahead and talk the archetype, how it works, why it works the way it does, and and kind of what I ended up liking about it that I that I didn't really expect I would. Right. So what you see over here is a snapshot from the deck. Now the full deck tech is available currently for channel members. That's already up as part of our weekly tournament recap video, so you can go check that out there. But again, over here, what you see is just a. I mean, it's it's pretty much the meat. Of the deck, right? So we have the Centauri Saber, you have the Dagger, you have your Armor Suite. So you're going to lead with the Saber and then give it, go again with Blade Runner or Run Through or Glint or there's also Blade Flash. I was not running Blade Flash on kind of a last minute edit because it didn't really do what I wanted it to do. I just found Run Through to be better, right? So, but either way, the, the idea there is you give the Saber go again and then your Dagger immediately gets go again. Now, the one problem that I saw, the reason I wasn't on this earlier is the one problem I saw is that's immediately a three pitch, right? Saber into your goes again, unless it's Glint, or but Saber into goes again into Dagger, that's three, right? Now you have go again on the tail of that, but something interesting here happens with Dorinthia, right? So if Dorinthia, or if you hit, right? I mean, that's what Dorinthia does. The first time you hit with a weapon, that weapon can swing again, right? So if they don't block the Saber, which... Side note here, I think one of the reasons this deck did as well as it did, to be clear, I went 2-1-1. One, and one. The draw was really, really unfortunate. I had that game in the bag, but that's how it goes sometimes, right? So I'm considering I went 3-1 effectively. I didn't, but I, I'm considering I effectively went 3-1. So I also think that this deck will become less effective as people start to realize that blocking the saber is important because a lot of people weren't blocking the two on the saber, right? Because if you block the saber with an attack action, then it goes to three, and then, right, they were afraid of react. So that was mainly the issue, is I think a lot of people were afraid of reacts on the first swing, and now that I know people, now that people know, or as people learn that we aren't running as many reacts, I don't think they're going to fall for that trap. So, because they were either not blocking the saber or they were overblocking the saber, right? And you love them to overblock the saber, but again, that's, that's not going to happen as this deck becomes more. So back to the deck itself, right? If they, if the saber hits, the saber can swing again. So at the very least you can go saber, dagger, saber, but that's four resources, right? That's four resources, which kind of sucks. It's not kind of sucks. It really sucks. So what we also have available are the zero fours. Yes, we're also playing CNC, but we have the zero fours. We have enlightened strikes. And Enlightened Strike a little less because you have to have the card for you strike. I, I grant you that. But the 0-4 is being able to follow up really, really, really helped, 
right? So, and I think that's what I didn't quite get my head around the first time that, or when I was really conceptualizing the deck and the dagger itself, is really the value of these zero fours. And I have to be honest, I think the thing I liked most about the deck was the fact that I could keep a one card hand and still threaten with those zero fours and exude confidence. There were several times actually I had a three card hand with exude confidence, especially like in game as you get more and more blues in your deck, right? Because you're pitching your blues, that's how it works. Uh, exude confidence was fantastic in game. Like there was a lot of times I was able to exude for eight and they, you know, there's like, oh, well, in game they didn't block. All of a sudden they're taking eight. Exude confidence was, mm. so yeah, that, I mean, that was one of my texts so that, that was not in the, we make. So I, again, I, I looked at the, we make best video that I recommended. I made a lot of edits because of my personal play style and how I wanted to play. Uh, another thing is I was running a couple reacts. I was running out for blood because it's really, really good in a multi-swing. And I was also running Iron Song Response. Uh, I didn't play Iron I never I did not play Iron Song Response all night. So I would make that stay or I would make that edit. Out for Blood, I think I played maybe once or twice over the course of the evening. And they were mostly to try and like force stuff. Right. And and by that I mean cards out of hand. So I mean, react at that point, but you know, you've got, you know, when people, you know, when people have defense reactions in Arsenal, so you get it right. So anyway, so that's mostly when I did that. Um, but I, I do think that, so I think the real power of this deck as I begin to still play with it and make it better is I think those zero fours are really, really strong. Now there's only one E-Strike in this deck because I only own one E-Strike, right? So I think I'd probably play two E-Strikes, not three, because it's very hard to do you basically have to have a four card hand to do everything you want to be able to finish with an e-strike, right? So I think probably two of those is the right play there. But the rest of it works really, really, really well. I do want to note in the swing in here, the the We Make Best video, they don't have in the swing. Instead, they use second swing, but second swing costs you a resource, and this deck is really expensive. So in the swing is 100% better. So highly recommend giving that a try. And then last, the, the biggest winner of the night is Valiant Dynamos. I mean, obviously that's kind of the point of the deck, but Valiant Dynamos in CC, when you're basically able to do it 90, when you're able to double swing 90% of your turns, Valiant Dynamos is just insane value. I, the the Dromai game that ended up going to draw, I think the thing blocked like 12 or 13 damage over the course of the game, just like Ashwing blocked, right? And then you come back with their Ashwings. Yeah, it's great. So anyway, I, I don't know. I don't know much more else to say here. I was... I just, like I said, I just had to get on here and I was pretty negative on the dagger overall. And it's not the bestest weapon in the history of all weapons, but it's better than I gave it credit for, right? So I think it's only fair to get on here and say, hey, you know, this deck builds probably, it's probably worth looking at, right? Give it some reps, give it some tries, build it out to be you and see if it works for you. So anyway, that'll do it. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Thanks for tuning in and nothing else. Go Commando.